All right, folks, thank you for your patience. We'll get started. We've got quite a large attendance, over 100 people. So hello and welcome, and thank you for joining us for session two of the Rural Research Collaborative Learning Work. work. So this is our, our clan and the Research Education and Training Calendar Seminar. I'm Dr. Alex Stevens, the Director of Research at Northern New South Wales Local Health District, and I belong to one of the member organisations of the RR Clan. By way of brief background, the RR Clan is a collaborative effort bringing together like-minded individuals from similar organisations to provide research learning, training and education opportunities, and also the possibility of future collaborative research. I do want to thank the representatives from member organisations for their ongoing support, commitment and enthusiasm for the RR Clan and also the delivery of the research education and training calendar. Today's seminar, Introduction to REDCap, is brought to you by Central Coast Local Health District and will be presented by Yin Wang, Research Governance Officer at the Central Coast LHD Research Office. Thank you, Yin. To officially get us started, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters where we work and live. We acknowledge the traditional custodians' living culture, their connection to country and their contribution to the life of this region. We pay our respects to the ancestors and elders of the region and to all Aboriginal people past, present and future and any Aboriginal people that may be joining us today. So welcome. Just a tiny bit of housekeeping. So given the large attendance, we've muted your microphone, so you don't need to worry about that. But please feel free to ask questions throughout the seminar using the chat function and we will endeavour to answer them. If we do get a bit of time towards the end of the session, uh, we'll open up to questions by unmuting your microphones. Uh, the session has been recording, recorded for viewing at a later date. If you don't want to appear in the recording, just simply turn off your cameras. Next slide, please, Yin. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce you to today's presenter, so Yin Wang. Yin has been the Research Governance Officer with the Central Coast LHD Research Office since October 2020. Yin's qualifications include training in diagnostic imaging, a Master of Public Health and a Master of International Business Management. Before joining the research office, Yin worked for eight years managing clinical trials from startup to closeout across multiple therapeutic areas and also including commercial, investigator initiated and collaborative studies. Yin worked for the George Institute for Global Health, George Clinical and HMRC Clinical Trials Centre and the University of Sydney as a senior research officer. Yin's main responsibilities in the Central Coast Research Office include processing governance applications via Regis, monitoring clinical trial activities across the district, providing education sessions and advice to Central Coast LHD staff, and assisting the research manager with the implementation of the National Clinical Trials Governance Framework and the clinical trial management system. So clearly a lot to do. So now without further ado, I hand over to Yin, who will guide you through today's presentation. Thank you very much, Yin. Many thanks, Alex. Um, my name is um, Yin Wang. Um, I'm a research governance officer at Central Coast Lo Local Health District. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to my introduction to RedCap session. Hopefully, by the end of today's webinar, you can have a brief understanding about RedCap and how it works. Today's learning objectives include overview of REDCap, stages in developing REDCap databases, and creating projects. Project workflow key features the difference between surveys and data forms, creating and distributing surveys, allocating user rights, and creating reports. Last but not least, the advantages of using REDCap. So first of all, what is REDCap? REDCap stands for Research Electronic Data Capture. It is a secure web-based data collection tool. It developed by Vanderbilt University in 2014 and is shared with academic and nonprofit institutions at no cost. REDCap community is a network of collaborators that has thousands of active institutional partners in over 100 countries. So um, REDCap is a data management tool that can be used for research and quality improvement studies and for operational projects if required. 
Recap data management activities will occur after the study protocol and before the final data analysis, which includes defined data to be collected, build and test database, collect and review data. Different types of applications and projects or can use RedCap as a platform to manage the project. It could be a research study, operation management, training activity, or an event management. Here is the global distribution of RedCap users. As you can see from the picture, there are over 2.4 million total end users using this software for more than 1.7 million projects across 151 countries. Um, RedCap database has four stages. The first is development. This is when databases are created and edited. Second is production. This is when all data collection happens. Third is inactive. This means data entry is temporarily halted. You can initiate this mode if you want to ensure that no new data entry will occur, but you would still like to access all of your data easily. Finally, the project can be archived. That means um, the project can be removed from your list of project databases, but your organization's Red Cap administrator can always turn it back to production mode. For example, if you have completed data analysis, you may move the project to archived status as an alternative to full deletion. Um, in this slide, I would like to give you a quick overview of the project workflow, because if collecting data for the purpose of human subjects research, Review and approval of the project by the ethics and the governance is essential and required. For a human research project, you will develop the protocol. The protocol determines what data should be collected on the case report form. So when you draft your study protocol, you can start to develop the RedCap database. Once you received ethics and governance approval, then you can move your database to production mode after testing, which means you can enter, review, analyze the real data. If you enter production mode and find that you do need to modify an element of your data entry forms, you may enter it back to draft mode and submit changes to, the, to be approved by the RedCap administrator. Um, data activities can continue during this draft mode. Um, and the last one is the archive mode. As I mentioned earlier, you can uh, move the project to archive status as an alternative to full deletion. Um, you can ar unarchive your project at any time as you wish. Um, so um, before you start to build a project, it's very important to consider on um, who or what are you planning to study? What kind of data are you measuring? Will your study be cross-sectional or longitudinal project? Have you discussed your study design with statistician? Um, all this information that is going to define during this step will determine how to build the database. So um, the um, following tasks are highly recommended before moving a project to production status. Um, first of all, um, please make sure you enter the test data using all fields in all instruments um, and all events. And to validate instrument and even definition, um, test all the branching logic, calculated fields, and et cetera. Next is review test data by opening data entry forms, creating reports, and exporting data and send the blank case report form to the project team for review. And the police also send a PDF version of the blank case report form and a data dictionary of your database to the statistician for review, please. Um, 
because、um, a statistician can make sure you are collecting the fields you need them in, in order to perform the statistical、um, analysis you need and ensure they do not extract identifiers. So it's important to think through the planned statistical analysis before collecting any data.、Um, in the next few slides, I will.、Um, Talk about、um, some key features about RedCap.、Um, so it is very easy to use interface. It is a web browser-based application software.、Um, anyone without program knowledge can use this web browser application without installing any additional software. RedCap can be used on any computer and mobile device with internet access. Um, it also has repeating and longitudinal data collection feature. So repeated measures using、um, same form with or without calendar or scheduling tool.、Um, collect data using the same form for the subject multiple times、um, for increased convenience, and is designed for a complex research project. It also supports multi-site study. So people from different locations can access and enter data into the same RedCap data collection form. Users at different sites or groups may be assigned in data access group. So own groups data can be built up, viewed, and edited within the site.、Um, and also support web-based survey. So used to collect. Data directly from survey participants and using email invitation or public link for anonymous survey. I will talk more about the service in my next few slides. And the next is the、um, various field types and validation options. So、um, it is open-ended, multiple choices and selections, and also has、um, calculated field branching logic. And it also allowed you to upload file in RedCap. It has a lot of、um, field validation options.、Um, and the next key feature is double data entry, also stands for DDE. So the administrator can enable this function in RedCap upon user request. So double data entry means two users can enter the data for same subject ID. Will then be compared and merged by the reviewer within the project team.、Um, and RedCap also supports data export, so、um, direct to、um, statistical packages to analyze with the identification options. Data export can be done by selected users from RedCap to different types of statistical software. Or Excel with some de-identification options. You can also import data to the RedCap. For example,、um, if you want to run a project and you realize some other teams they already built up the database, you can just、um, ask them to、um, export it,、um, the variables to you. Then you can import to your database. So it to bring the collected data form from outside of RedCap into the current database. And can be used if the existing data can be converted into CSV file, and possible to input、um, and merge data and continue the data collection during import data status. And it also generates a lot of different types of reports and gives the opportunity to get some sort of data with future conditions. Um, it doesn't do any statistical analysis, but presents the selected part of the entire data set. Um, um, so here are another three key features、um, I would recommend it for advanced users. The first is the、um, application programming interface API. So the API is used to import and export without logging into RedCap. By using programming code, so this is for programming level users, and a unique user token is given when required for this API function. And next is eConsent framework. 
So it provides standardized tools to obtain consent and store consent documentation with a certification screen and a storage function which automatically generates a hard copy PDF of the signed form. If your project involves um, e-consent, um, please make sure um, you include this part in your study protocol. Just mention uh, you will use RedCap to obtain consent from the participants and get it um, reviewed and approved by the ethics and the governance. Um, and next is randomization. So it implements um, a defined randomization model with, within your project and allowing you to randomize your subjects. Um, please be aware that REDCap does not support dynamic randomization. This means REDCap does not create randomization table for you. So the table must be generated outside of REDCap software, uh, most likely by the statistician or data analyst involved in your project. Um, another um, key feature, like um, it's focus on the data security options. So the data collection will be done under individual required secure login with username and password. And user access controls are also provided. Only people who have rights to the database can view or edit data. Every user may have different access user rights as set up by the RedCap project owner following the study protocol. Identified information can be removed before exporting the data through the identification. This is optional and the communication between the server and user is encrypted. This is also another very good security feature. Um, before I go into more details about RedCap, um, I would like to invite you to take part in a um, poll so I can find about a little bit more about you. I think there are a total um, seven questions there. Um, if you can go through it one by one and click submit and we can um, go through the questions together later on. Um, Katie, Alex, would you like me to launch that poll? Yeah, that yeah. first one? Thank yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, launched. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully that comes up. So I gather once you've finished taking the poll or completed all seven questions, you'll start seeing the results appear on the screen. Yeah. Um, I, might, I might just go through how some people still, you know, try to complete. So the first one we asked, uh, what one word best describes your current mood? I can see a lot of people said calm, happy, tired, content, engaged. That's great to hear. And a focus, that's good. Relaxed, fairly happy, busy, frustrated. <laughs> it's a very interesting answer here. Um, and um, I can see 142 people respond, but the majority of them are like interested, happy, tired, and calm. So um, 
Before we move to the next question, if you guys don't mind. And so you can see, um, so currently we have, okay, 162 people responded. And so um, the motive are you start learning about Red Cap and we got um, 4.1. So like almost over four stars, which is very good to see. Um, and the third one is what level of experience do you have using Red Cap? So, so far we have 186 people responded. So with beginners, like it's 92%. Um, and, and we have 7% intermediate and 1%, um, I think that's my response. <laughs> I don't call myself expert. So um, if anyone like kind of, um, you know, if you see any questions pop in the chat, if you know the answer, please feel free to um help it out and go for it. Um, otherwise, I will go through these questions after my presentation. And um, what can REDCap can use for, can be used for? So research studies, data of patients, data collection, database, research and QI, collection and analysis. Yeah, so REDCap can be used for a lot of um, research project and operational plan. Um, and what does field mean in red cap? So the correct answer is all of above. It's good to see 49% people get all corrected. So it's um, it, so the field can mean um, question, variable, and unique items of data to be collected and analyzed. Um, and what does instrument mean red cap? Yeah, that's good. It means survey page and data entry form and what does calendar mean in red cap so um, patient schedule at the event follow-up so this is the correct answer um, it does not link to your own work calendar but you do can um, put what you want to schedule like patient visits in the red cap calendar then it will help you to um, give you a reminder um, thanks very much for um completing the first poll. So um, I think I will just move to my next slide. Um, so uh, before, so thank you very much. Um, and um, I think um, before you get familiar with REDCap, you should know a lot of definition and wording that used in REDCap. You can also refer to terminology. So um, first is ARMS. So ARMS means groups of events. You may want to employ multiple ARMS when using different treatment groups, such as the control group and experimental group, or conducting a multi-site study, for instance. And the branching logic may be employed when fields or questions need to be hidden for data entry under certain conditions. And the calendar means the project calendar to help organize the patient scheduling and keep track of any upcoming events. CRF stands for case report form. So it is also the form you collect all the variables for your project. And data dictionary, it is an, an Excel file and containing the list of fields of given project and their associated attributes. Events is used in longitudinal designs. I will talk more about what this longitudinal project means later on. And an event is a scheduled or unscheduled occurrence during which data is captured using your recap data instruments. In the field, as I just mentioned earlier, it can be a variable or a question. Um, it's just a data entry such as age or height. And file repository. So repository that stores and retrieves files and documents used for a project. Whenever a data export is performed, the resulting data and syntax files are stored in the file repository of the project. An instrument stands for survey page or data entry form. And the logging, so this is a module that lists all changes made to this project, including data exports, data changes, and the creation or deletion of users. 
So it is used for audit your project or audit your trial. And the project status, as I already mentioned in um, the slides before, it has development, production, draft, um, and archived. And a project type, it can have single survey or data entry form or a mix of single survey and then data entry forms. And record label, so it is information and the variables added to the unique ID of the study um, to help select the right record during data entry. For example, data of birth or last name can be added as record labels when selecting a subject for data entry. Um, but please bear in mind that record labels are displayed only and have no impact when exporting data. OK, so um, how you can create a project in RedCap? There are three project types available in RedCap. One is data collection form. Um, so it is only performed by the study team. And another is the survey. This means the data collection performed only by the study participants. And if your project um, involves screening patients and then you will enroll them into the project, then you can um, combine survey and data entry forms. Here just an example, um, the classic project with mix of surveys and data entry form. So for example, you have demographics, like you ask patient's name, email address, and um, health history, then you can use data form. And as I said, if it's a screening, you would like the participant to tick the answers, then you can use survey. And um, if it's consent, you will send direct to the participant to ask them to read information on the consent form and provide their signature and date, then, we'll, then it can be done through survey. And the initial data, if you would like the participant to complete, it can be set up as survey. If your team would like to um, enter data from your end, then it can be data form. And the randomization, it has to be data form. As I said, you have to um, talk to your projects, um, like such as data analyst or statistician, they will help you to create the table. Then you upload it into RedCap, so it has to be data form. And if you have a lot of follow-up studies for your project, it can be used either surveys or data form. So this is just an example. You don't necessarily to follow this table. So um, there are two collection formats available for data entry forms. One is called classic, which means one record per patient. And the second is longitudinal. This means one record per patient per event with the possibility of defining multiple arms. So this, the, the below table, just a quick overview of um, the longitudinal project. So you can see they have three arms in this project. So, um, and you know, you can have demographics, baseline data, follow-up visits. So the beauty of longitudinal project is, for example, you already create all the variables you would like to collect for follow-up visits. And um, you can just easily apply to the different arms or the event, you would like to repeat these variables. So you, once you build up, you just apply to either event one or two or three. It really depends on what you, your project is doing. And here is just a quick overview of um, the difference between classic project and the longitudinal project. As you can see from this table, majority of them are quite similar. Um, but um, the longitudinal project, so each data collection instrument can be administrated multiple times at events, but the classic project can only be administrated once to a participant. And they can both include surveys and longitudinal project, the calculations and the pipping expressions use more complex syntax and the data for a participant is exported in multiple records. Um, but for classic projects, 
um, it is exported as a single record. And only the longitudinal projects um, support multiple arms and this classic project, no arm can be supported. So just one patient per event only. Um, so how you can create a project? So when you um, have your recap account set up, um, you just create a new project by clicking on new project as shown below. After clicking new project, you will see this screen ask you to create a new recap project and select practice just for fun as the purpose of this project. So in um, under that project's purpose, you can actually choose research, quality improvements, other or operational. Um, I said here, um, select practice just for fun. It's more like um, if you are the first time you use RedCap and once you have the login and a password and you're not very familiar how does RedCap works, please just select the purpose of you know practice. Then you can just um, play around and make sure yourself get familiar with how does RedCap works. Then you select create an empty project, the blank state. And you can see the blue table. So this is, you know, the um, the graded area. So if you choose um, use a template, then you will be able to choose one below. So this is also we call RedCap um, library. So they do have some um, forms. They build it in, in the library you can choose from and you can um, amend it accordingly. It's really based on uh, what kind of forms you would like to use. And then just click create project. The project will be created. Then you go to the project setup from the main menu bars here, like top, top tabs, and click online designer to start customizing your project. Once you're clicking that online designer, then you will be able to see this picture, which is create new instrument in the project. So um, you um, so I just put some tips here. If you're the first time you use RedCap, it will be good. You create an additional instrument to include both forms um, to this pra practice project. Then you can set up one as data collection form and set another as survey. And um, in this slide, I will talk about um, what the user rights. So on your left hand side under application, you will click on user rights. So um, user rights tool is allow you to add another user to a project. Um, you can add with custom rights. For example, you have a research assistant and you only want to um, ask that research research assistant to help you with data entry, you probably will just only give that person um, edit role rather than um, design the project database or exporting any data. And um, you can also create a role, for example, um, research assistant, um, data manager, and just pre-filled all these custom rights then later on just help you to easily drag them or to the same row if you like. Otherwise, you can just uh, um, select the first one, add them individually by customizing their rights. And in this slide, we'll talk about data export. So it's the same um, on your left hand side and application. There's um, data export reports and the stats. So once you click that, um, it will show the data um, export. So export date and export data, and it will show up a lot of different options you can choose from. So you can export data in many different ways. Um, please make sure you take a few minutes to look at type of formats. You can export your data, the identification options and advanced data formatting options. So in this slide, I will talk about what is a RedCap survey. So in RedCap, a survey is a version of a 
data form that is completed by a study participant without logging into the RedCap system. So when the participant click the link, it will take them directly to, for example, this page. Just ask them to fill in their first name, last name and email address. And from this table, you can see it does not require them to um, have a username and a password to log in. And if you want to create a survey, so within the project setup checklist, make sure your project is enabled for surveys first. So just click that use surveys in this project and then create a data form, then enable the data form as a survey within online designer. So you still go back to the online designer and you create a data collection form, then enable this data collection form as survey. So there are two types of survey links you can use in RedCap. One is public survey, another is private survey. So public survey is a public, um, pu publicly available link. Um, these surveys can be anonymous if no personally identifying information is collected in the survey. And the private survey, um, which means sends the survey links to specific participants. So in the public survey option, RedCap generates a link that can be posted online or emailed to potential participants. Anyone can click this link any number of times and the RedCap auto numbers the responses. There is no way to know who responded to a public survey unless you ask for identifiers in your survey, such as what's your name, what's your email address. So from this table, you can see um, there are a few options. The first is the public survey link, and it allows you to create custom um, survey link or generate access code or QR code. So the public survey link is the simplest and fastest way to um, collect survey responses. Next is private survey. So um, RedCap generates a unique survey link for each participant. This requires that you have each participant's email address first, unless you will be opening the survey for the patient. So through the participant list, allows for emailing the survey to your participants and keeping track of responses. Um, so what you will need to do is um, just uh, um, go to the participant list tab and the survey distribution tool and enter the email address of participants and one individual per line to add them as participants to the project. And after participants are added, you can compose and send a survey invitation by pushing the Compose Survey Invitations button. Survey invitations can also be scheduled to send immediately or at a later date and a time. Um, if you need to keep track of which email address corresponds um, with which record ID, just easily click Enable under Participants Identifier before the data collection beginning. Um, please bear in mind that testing is critical because to test your survey, you need to send the link to yourself in the same method as you plan to send a link to a respondent. Take your survey a few times to make sure the instructions format and um, termination options work as needed and export test data to check data analysis and modify survey questions if needed. Once testing is complete, request the project be moved to production mode and do not send out survey until then. Um, in this slide, I would just would like to give you a um, quick overview of the public survey link and private survey link, it's just a, a quick summarize. So public survey link may be the easiest way to promote your survey um, because the responses are anonymous or participants access the same URL. 
the same participants may take the survey multiple times. There's no way to monitor responses as you have no way to tell who did or did not fill out the survey. Um, and uh, um, responses uh, for the private survey link, um, responses are anonymous and a unique URL is generated for each participant. Each participant may respond to the survey only once, and you can send directly to your target audience. And you may view the status of each survey via the survey invitation log. So how you can distribution the survey? Um, I already like, touched a uh, majority of them, but if you want to know, um, how you can get notification. So um, first of all, you need to go to the online designer page and click on survey notifications. Then you can enter the people like your email address or your project team's email address there. Then click that um, notification enabled. Then this means um, if the participant complete the survey and you will receive a notification email. So the email reads like, um, you know, a respondent completes your survey titled and your project name on this date and a time. And you can click that link called view their responses here. You can click that link. It will take you directly to their um, completed survey and you can have a look. So what's the difference between surveys and data forms? So surveys do not require participant login. Data entry is performed by a participant and can be used for anonymous or personalized data collection. And all completed surveys have a date and timestamp that can be included in reports and exports and easier to enter responses from a smartphone or tablet sleek interface that can be customized with logos and instructions and configurable automated reminders for participants to complete the survey and optional notification when survey is completed. And the data collection forms. So if you want to use data collection form, user must be an authorized RedCap user. Um, data entry is performed by study staff. So this means you will need to have a username and a login to the RedCap database. And each user must be granted access by the project owner and users entering data have the ability to see all data they have previously entered, edit previous responses or check for updates. And the data entry is audited and users have the ability to give a form a status, marking it as complete or incomplete, depending on what is most useful for your project workflow. So um, in this slide, I will talk about how to get RedCap um, access. Um, Please be aware that um, RedCap is not an open resource. So using RedCap at your organization requires a license agreement between your nonprofit institution and Vanderbilt University. So please contact your local organization's RedCap administrator to get your um, RedCap access. Um, at Central Coast Local Health District, we have a CCLHD RedCap server and we used to allow our local staff to apply a new user account for re all research and then research activities. However, in November last year, CCLHD has signed up a new instance of RedCap, which is managed by New South Wales Health Office for Health and medical research OHMR for ethically approved projects. Um, and um, this red cap is expected to be used for all quality improvements from March and April this year. So this will eventually replace the CCLHD instance of red cap, although um, our red cap system will remain in place for all quality improvements operational and research projects that are currently set up there until they have been completed. And um, this, our RedCap system access has been restricted so that 
no new project can be set up without an email request. So after all these slides, let's just have a look like why we use RedCap. Because it supports all stages of data lifecycle and it helps secure storage of data and um, you can access from anywhere. Um, it um, works better for collaboration and it reduced the risk of data breaches. Um, it supports different study designs. As I said, um, classic or longitudinal like research or clinical trials. Um, and it also comply with governance requirements and ethical requirements. Um, it's um, an ongoing system development. Um, it works better for project management or you have operational plan. Um, and it is um, also provides secure data and a file transfer. Um, also another key feature, as I uh, mentioned before, it provides online consent and you can export um, to different statistical packages. Um, it developed by researchers for researchers and um, has a lot of um, extensive functionality um, and generate different types of reports and real time data collection. And you can collect quality data. And most importantly, it is free. So this is almost the end of my presentation. Um, I would like to invite you to take part in another poll, um, just to um, have a quick refresh uh, what we have uh, mentioned. And I will also go through these questions with you after your completion. So there are a total eight questions. Alex, do you mind just quickly launch the poll? Yep. Just getting to it now. Thank you very Launch. much. There you go. Thank you. So they should have come up now, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Oh, good. Yeah, um, I might just uh, go through the first one, um, if you don't mind. So the first one question is, how many database stages does RedCap have? I can see current have 145 response. Um, so 44% um, of people chose like um, four. So this is the correct answer. Um, so it um, have, um, um, as I mentioned, you um, development mode, um, production, draft, and, um, you know, like um, inactive. Um, and next question is, which recap features attracts you the most? Uh, I can see, you can see a majority of people said surveys. 
So service is a very popular, you know, key features. A majority of the, you know, the researchers or um, health workers would like to use Red Cap. Um, so as I touched the base earlier, it can be public survey or private survey. Um, and data collection and data deposit, um, yeah, or good um, data storage. Um, and the third question is, um, can RedCap create a randomization table for your research project automatically? So the answer is no. As I said, um, RedCap does not have that dynamic function. Um, it will not create a um, randomization table for you automatically. You will need to talk to your project statistician or data analyst um, to um, to um, discuss what type of randomization your team would like to create. Once the table created by them, then you can upload it to RedCap. Um, is RedCap an open resource? Yes. So the answer is no, it is not an open resource. Um, you've, you will need to talk to your local organization RedCap administrator because it does require license agreement with your institution and Vanderbilt University. Um, and can I make changes to my project in production mode? Yes, the correct answer is yes, you can. So once you make into um, uh, the, the project already moved to production mode, you can just turn it back to draft mode and you can make any changes there. Um, once you um, amend your project database, um, it will just automatically send to the RedCap um, administrator they will review all these changes and they will agree, which means all these changes will be um, kind of show back in your production mode. So you do can make change um, even if it's in the production mode. And do you need to log onto RedCap to complete the data collection form, case report form? Yeah, the answer is yes. As I said, data case, the data collection form or CRF, um, this requires the um, project study team to complete. So you need a username and a password to log into RedCap to enable you um, fill in these forms. Um, only the survey does not require you um, password and login details. So this is um, next question. Does a participant need to have a RedCap account to complete the survey? Um, the correct answer is no. Um, so they do not need a, a password and a username. They just click the link you send to them or they scan the QR code. If it's a public survey, it will just directly take them to your survey and they just can fill in either by computer or mobile phone or um, tablet, and you will receive the response. And the last question is, can a participant be identified through a private survey link? Um, I can see a bit struggle, so like 38% people answered no, and 50% uh, people answered yes. So the question, the correct answer is yes because when you generate a private survey link, um, if you can recall that my, in my slide, I mentioned you have to enter their email address. So this means you can already identify who they are. And the link actually is generate links to individual. So when they provide a response, you can tell who provided response. So hope it makes sense. Um, okay, so thanks for, um, Completing the, let me just go back to here. So, um, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Yin. That was an incredible presentation. I know it was an introduction to RedCap, but I think you gave us a comprehensive overview of the system and its sheer capability. Uh, just this slide here advertises our next uh, RR Clan education session, which will be slightly different on consumer and community involvement in research. Uh, there are a few questions, but before we get there, you know, I might get you to put up the next slide as well, which has the QR code to the short evaluation. I've also added the link to the evaluation, which we're uh, using WetCap for, so we're uh, practicing what we've uh, spoken of today. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yin, 
while people yeah, I'll have a look at chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's okay. I've I've noted a few questions. There's a lot more. I don't think we'll get through. But okay. Linda Dees uh, had a question around for survey distribution of participants. Will an email to text, as in that functionality, address work like Telstra TIM instant messaging? I don't really know what that means. Or does it need to be an email address? Does that make any sense to you, Yin? Yeah, yeah, so um so currently like in Red Cap, the surveys you have to get their um email address. So like if you go through with the private link, so the only thing you can record is you enter their email address. But if you like um kind of like a QR code, then they can use their um you know mobile phone to scan the QR code. So it does not like you can just enter their like um numbers or it does not have that function at the moment. So if you send it through the private link, it has to be the participant's email address. But if it's a public survey, it can be any kind of methodology you would like to use. Thank you, Yin. <laughs> there were a number of questions around the administrators for REDCap, and I believe that's the OHMR mm -hmm. instance of REDCap. And I yeah. think the general advice was to uh, mm. contact your local research office. Would that be your yeah. view as well, Yin? Yeah, because um, as I said, I mentioned earlier, um, at CCL HD, we do have CCL to Red Cap server, which is a license agreement um, between, you know, the Vanderbilt University and our like institution and other parties involved. Um, so at your local health district or at your like local non-profit institution, um, you might can ask someone from your organization and see whether you like like your your local health district has red cap server. Um, of course, you will need to apply like through your local health district. Sounds good, Yin. And the last question I think before we draw the session to a close is from Zelda Doyle. Yeah. Zelda asks if I understand. Correctly, Coltrix is not as secure as REDCap, and REDCap can integrate with your LHD Human Research Ethics Committee, while Coltrix can't. So I'll hand that over to you, Yin. Yeah. First. Um. Could you could could you repeat that questions again? I think I missed uh, missed. Yep. Yeah, Zelda part. asks if I understand correctly, Coltrix is not as secure as REDCap, and REDCap REDCap can integrate with your LHD Human Research Ethics Committee, while Col Coltrix can't. Yeah, so the red cap, um, it's it, it's just a kind of like data collection form. So nowadays, a lot of research projects, um, so they do mention they use red cap, like to um collect the research projects and whatever you want to use red cap for, you can create you know the data collection form and you can submit it to the ethics like the human research ethics committee for review and just let them aware that you will use recap um, as part of your um, project activity and they just review and approved but if you make some any changes in your recap database you also need to notify them yeah and look the only thing i'll add on top of yin's response there is that qualtrics isn't uh, not supported platform I think it can be and mm -hmm. sometimes it does depend what the source of the Poltrix is it will have mm -hmm. a build similar to red cap and you need to understand potentially where the data is stored and once you understand where the data is stored you can always consent participants they acknowledge yeah. that they're happy to use Qualtrics. I'd say yeah. look red cap probably has greater strength in terms of data security so if you can potentially yeah. access an instance of red cap you know that that would be yeah. advantageous yeah. Look, I think we're drawing uh, towards the uh, close of today's session. It's 29 past uh, the clock on uh, my watch. So thank you very much, Yin, again, for the fantastic presentation. I think we'll draw today's session to a close. Remember, in about a month, we've got another RR Clan session on consumer con community involvement in research. Hopefully you can join us for that. Be on the lookout for emails regarding the recording for today's session and also the evaluation, evaluation survey. Thank you, everyone, for joining and uh, enjoy the rest of your days. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. OK, bye.